Shapey Dinos, welcome back to the Dinosaur Toy Blog channel. Except today, dinosaurs may only play a small part, they might not play a part at all, depending on what we find in these boxes, because today I'm going to do a Stuff from the Attic special. So over the Christmas holiday, I went up into my parents' attic and I dug out all of my old toys. Most of these will date from my childhood in the 90s, although a lot of the toys will date from before then because these, as you can see, are retro original release Star Wars figures, which I collected after the fact in the 90s, um, in my early teens. So I thought we'd just go through these boxes, see what we can find, and just spice things up a little bit on the channel. It doesn't always have to be dinosaurs. So let's begin with these big machines on top, starting with, oh, it has to be everyone's favourite toy, right? This is the original Atat from The Empire Strikes Back. Let's see, these are all very dusty, as I say, they've, they've come out of the attic, I haven't seen them in a long time. And oh, there's some... There's some people in there. So what? this will be testing my memory because it's been probably 20 years, 25 years, since I saw any of these toys and figures. I, I loved Star Wars when I was growing up and I learned a lot about it. I was a big fan until the prequels and the more recent films. They've put me off of Star Wars a bit. I'm more of an original trilogy guy. Anything beyond that is not particularly of interest to me. I think this is a TIE fighter pilot. Uh, and I'm sure we'll find many more original figures in these boxes. So let's see, what shall I do with them? I think I'll, uh, maybe I'll just lay them out as we go, see what we find. So that's a TIE fighter pilot. pilot. I don't know what he's doing in the at, -at. And this is... Let me think. This is a droid. I think it's a Death Star droid. One of the original Star Wars figures. Put him there with his buddy. I'm doing all of the handling here with my left hand. Uh, it's only now that I'm doing it this way that I realise that camcorders are really designed for right-handed people. And there's no way I could do this holding the camcorder with my left hand. And so... And, Sorry if I'm stumbling around with my left hand when I'm moving some of these figures around. So back to the Atat. -at. Wonderful figure. You can open it up here. See what's inside. Oh, it's... Uh... See, back in the early 90s, the internet wasn't a thing. So if you wanted information, you had to print it out. So I've... Got a list here of all of the original Star Wars figures. Collect all 92. Uh, presumably as a checklist so that I could take them off as I went. Uh, and inside the at app you've got your handle which controls the head left and right. You can push it so it goes up and down. And there's a little button if I remember. Uh, there's a button that you can press which if the batteries are working, which they're not, would control the guns on the underside of the head which given that mine was second hand it was missing those guns although I remember adding some Lego guns on the, the underside just to give the illusion of this thing being complete so yeah what, what a wonderful figure wonderful vehicle and I loved that model let's see what else have we got this is a Darth Vader's head. Um, yeah, this is, I think, a carrying case for the figures. It's, it's empty to me, but let's just check. Uh, yeah, so it's empty, but the toys would have gone in there. Again, these. this is not brilliant uh, quality, uh, condition rather. Um, that's because... It was not mine. I would have looked after my toys far better than the previous owners of these. So let's put this to one side. 
more vintage Star Wars stuff. This is a original chicken walker. Is there anybody inside? No. And this one has a button on the back which you can press to make the legs move. Oh, it's got settings. Uh, okay, so you push the button to the left and it stands. Trying to do this with my left hand. Push the button to the right and it should work. Well, it is 30 years old, so not surprised that it's not really working very well. Oh, well, it's better now. I think it's because I'm trying to do this with my left hand. Come on. I need to put the button back, otherwise it won't stand. There we go. So, that's like the little brother of the big hat. What else have we got here? This is Slave One, the ship that belongs to the bounty hunter Boba Fett. Who is he in there? I don't think he is. Very dusty. He's... I think I got that quite late in my collecting career, uh, probably when I was 15 or 16 or something like that as a Christmas present or a birthday present. I wasn't buying these eventually to play with them, but really just to display them, collect them really. So next we have the Rancor monster. This is the big creature that lives down in Jabba the Hutt's palace basement. And let's have a look. He does have a action feature. I think there's a button on his back. Here it is. And if you pull that, it draws open and close. Really nice design. That's one of the things I liked about Star Wars was not just the ships and the characters, but the huge diversity of different creatures, monsters and planets. That's something that I feel is missing from the more recent films, where it's uh, yeah, the the range of aliens is a, is, is a little bit less satisfactory compared to the originals, in my opinion. Okay, so what have we got in the boxes? Padder's box. Ooh. So yeah, this is not all Star Wars, as you can see. All right, let's lay these out. What have we got? Some of it's Star Wars. You've got a Yoda head. Yoda. I think this had sweets in it. I think this was a, a sweet dispenser. And here is the equivalent C-3PO. Um, I think there should be some more in here. And there's your Darth Vader. Doesn't want to stay. And there may be more. The, this is a Thundercat, that's Chitara. These would have been figures that I did have when I was a kid, probably in the 80s actually. Um, the Thundercats was a cartoon that I remember enjoying and collecting the toys. There's another one, this one is Snarf. We'll put him in a loving embrace with Chitara. Uh, this is an alien figure from the Aliens movie. I think I found this, I think I, I, I vaguely recall finding this on a beach on holiday somewhere. Um, that's just a vague memory though. Uh, there's a button on here which if you press, oh, it explodes. So that's quite a nice action feature. What have we got here? Adamodactyl. Adamodactyl, strong and confident with the loudest squawk around. Well, I don't know if that describes me very well, but it looks a bit like me. So maybe I, I don't think I ever used this. I probably got this as a, as a gift one holiday and decided to uh, put it in a box, save it for later. What else have we got here? There's Chewy, that's part of that series of heads. Uh, a lot of these are monster in my pockets. 
Uh, yeah, that that one is. Yeah, these are definitely monsters in my pockets, and I remember now having a lot of monsters in my pocket toys. These were some of the later releases. They're much bigger than the originals, and they were multicolored, whereas the originals that I remember were more like this, uh, single coloured. Hey, that's one of the originals. I'm sure when we get to these boxes we'll find some more monster in my pockets. I remember having plenty of them. Uh, there's another. Uh, and another. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a Boglin. I remember Boglins. Little plastic goblin things. They had big ones that were like hand puppets. And then these were little small versions, more collectible. Uh, yeah, great for little kids like me. There's another one here. Hmm. Bizarre toys. Oh, there's some more Star Wars stuff here. That looks like micro machines. Star Wars micro machines. And maybe other bits and pieces. There's some Star Wars pencil toppers. But definitely, oh, yeah, what have I written on here? Boba Fett Backpack Vintage 10 Inch. Oh, so, oh, I think that's a reference to these little pieces here, which, that there and that there, I think they, they're part of the backpack, according to my notes, from a large Boba Fett figure, which I suppose we'll find later on. Uh, here is a box of... Star Wars stickers, um, all unstuck. I think these were probably, these aren't vintage, these are probably from the re-release when the Star Wars Special Edition came out. I don't know why I've got a whole box of them. 25 pence a packet. Uh, take that out. Some random dinosaurs. And that's appropriate, given the name of the channel. There's one, another there. Hmm. You can see why I didn't pick them out for display and why they've ended up in my boxes from when I was a lot younger. This is another Star Wars item. This is a keyring uh, of a character called Greedo. Metal keyring. What am I going to do with all of these? Oh, there's another monster in my pocket. Uh, these are these are models that I made when I was a child. That looks like a Triceratops or some sort of Ceratopsian Chasmosaurus, maybe. I used to make these with uh, modelling clay or Fimo, I think it was called Fimo Fimo. So I uh, sculpted these. Uh, supervised by my mum, who would have then put them in the oven for me to bake them. That's, that's jogging some nice memories there. So that's one. I saw a few others. There's a Triceratops. Oh, it's, one of its horns is broken. But that's not too bad. What else is in here? There's another FIMO model. Jurassic Park style Velociraptor. Uh, an ammonite, an ammonite with tentacles, nice big eyes. There was a paleontologist in me there, even growing up. You can see I've added in the siphuncle there. Oh, I did quite a good job with that. I should maybe start modelling these and selling them on the dinosaur toy blog. Um, there's another here, this is a Bellumite, a weird multicoloured <laughs> tentacles, very dusty as well. And there's another here, this is a duck-billed dinosaur, Parasaurolophus, with pink and blue spots on its head. Well, these are all one-of-a-kind pieces, you're not going to find these for sale anywhere. Um, 
just noticed this Adamosaurus. This is this is the uh, this is what I had on my door on my bedroom door. Adamosaurus. It goes quite well with the Adamodactyl money bank. Hmm. Well, this is a lizard magnet. There's another magnet there. Oops, more Star Wars stuff and R two D two magnet. This is this is not old. This is a. I think is that the collector fellow or is it the Schleich fellow? I think that that might be collector. I don't know how that's got in there. Hmm. Uh, there's an animal toy. This is a a toy. Oh, what do you what do you, what do they call them? Lava lamp. I think this came from a toy. Like this is from a. Hmm. Oh, let me think. Oh, Austin Powers. I think this was an Austin Powers toy. This was an accessory that came with an Austin Powers figure. Uh, this is. I think that is part of a Jurassic Park set. I believe that is the the muzzle for a the baby T-Rex from The Lost World. Um, yeah, so I better put that to one side. The actual dinosaur is somewhere around. Uh, don't know what they are. Southern Comfort. Now I'm, I'm guessing there's no Southern Comfort here. Oh, let's see. No, it is obviously more toys. This is some dragons which I remember buying on holiday once upon a time, green and red. And this looks like badges and stickers and magnets from Jurassic Park mostly. Let's bring them out. Let's have a photo. Brachiosaurus magnet, a Brachiosaurus badge. Um, looking a bit grizzled, that one. And there's red lightning in the background too. I don't remember any red lightning in the film. Let's lighten these up. Um, Jurassic Park Velociraptor magnet. That's the same series as this. I don't know where these came from. Were they maybe given away as, uh, in cereal? Don't know. And there's another. Jurassic Park Triceratops and the Jurassic Park T-Rex Oh these are really nice, it says they're the Tyrannosaur Velociraptor Jurassic Park Look down my gob and look it's got either white lightning in its mouth or it's dribbling and That's obviously part of the same series as that but different sizes oh i think i think these came on birthday cards yeah these would have been these would have been on the front of birthday cards which is why they're different sizes uh, this is a an iguanodon keyring that i would have colored in myself i can't remember what this product was called but these came on large sheets of uh, plasticky paper that you would colour in and then put into the oven and then they would shrink down into a nice little solid card cardboard like plasticky uh, handy sized keyring so there's some example of my colouring in skills from when I was what, 11, 12 I don't know put that over there a Bratodon. <laughs> hmm. I don't know what dinosaur it's supposed to be. It's got plates like a Stegosaurus, but it's got a horn like a Monoclonius. It's got sharp teeth, so it's a theropod, uh, and it's wearing trainers, so it's a Ornithomimid. So it's a combination of various different creatures. Maybe that came on a birthday card as well. What else have we got in this tin? Euoplocephalus badge with a nice piece of John Sibic artwork. I'm guessing that was another birthday card. Let's put that there. 
Um, Gallimimus. Jurassic Park Gallimimus pin badge. There's several in this series. Um, were these on birthday cards or were these with cereal? I do not know, but there's the Dilophosaurus. Uh, the Brachiosaurus. This is also the Triceratops. The T-Rex. Is there anything else in here? Uh, there's a glow-in-the-dark plesiosaur shaped piece of plastic. Um, yep. There's another badge, what's this? Uh, good old Jurassic Park logo. That's quite nice, it's nice and bright, kept its colour. I'm tempted to put some of these on my um, bag or something. Oh, there's another one, smaller size. Yes, yes, I know, I haven't been mentioning these uh, prequel pieces. There's a pin, which is a T-Rex if I remember, yeah, a little T-Rex pin. Uh, there's a gun. Don't know what that belongs to. Uh, oh, wait, I vaguely remember looking into it. It might be a piece of a transformer. And then what have we got here? Yeah. Uh, Mace Windu can't resist inquiry. <laughs> um, these are Star Wars Episode 1 pieces of card from Walker's crisps so these would have come inside the packets of walkers crisps are they just are they literally just pieces of card oh no they open ah uh, this is this is why it would be handy to be using my right hand what's inside can you resist up to one million starting at level one scratch only one circle at every level Arrow equals continue, cross equals lose, continue, 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 the prize level, choose only one, guarantee, <laughs> guarantee Jar Jar toy, or one million chance, well I, I'm guessing I picked the one million chance, lost, and then decided to see if I would have got a Jar Jar toy, which I would have, I guess every single card would have been a free toy, they probably had more Jar Jar toys than they knew what to do with. See reverse, it said there, for full game details. Um, no, it's okay. So what other characters do we have here? It's Obi-Wan Kenobi who can't resist honour. Mace Windu can't resist inquiry. So I'm going to guess all of these prequel characters can't resist something. Which one is going to be Can't Resist Walker's Crisps? That's what I'm wondering. Padme Can't Resist Curiosity. Jar Jar Can't Resist Appetite. Oh dear. Darth Maul Can't Resist Pursuit. Um, we've already had him. What did he... It's honour again. Yeah, he couldn't resist honour then, and he still can't resist honour. And I think, he, I think old Darth Maul here, he couldn't resist pursuit. They're very one-dimensional characters, aren't they? So Bob can't resist cheating. And appetite again. Oh, what's this? The Carnegie Collection Elasmosaurus. And with the old Safari Limited label there. This would have been one of the earliest Carnegie toys I acquired and it is on display in the shelf behind me but I didn't know that I'd kept the little tag here so that's good to know I do have a collection of dinosaur toy tags I might go through them one day on the channel but uh, I'll have to remember to add this one although a little bit of damage there and the last thing from this jar this tin is a another Jurassic Park Raptor but this one is a Lost World style up there with the black and orange colouration. 
so that was that was quite an interesting little tin to go through there with dragons and all sorts of other bits and pieces lots of Jurassic Park stuff including many badges and a bag full of micro machines and some odd vintage bits and pieces so that's what was in that box so you can imagine how long it's going to take to get through the rest I wonder shall we do another one yeah let's do another one we've gone we've been going 25 minutes already so we probably won't do all of these in one video I might have to split this up into two parts but let's go through this big box next and see where that leaves us okay Ooh. 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 Okay. Well, let's go through. Let's get this bag first. This looks like more vintage Star Wars stuff. Um, and it is some of these vintage Star Wars vehicles. There's a little, little rolly thing. Look, if I remember correctly, this. Ooh, yeah, it goes in and out. This is a mini desert skiff. What else have we got? This is a speeder bike from Return of the Jedi. And this has an action figure, if I remember. There's a button on the back. Let's press it. Whoa! Yeah. Blows up. Here is... A torn torn from the Empire Strikes Back. And you can see there's a opening in the back where you can push the legs of the action figures through. And on the brown plastic on the side you've got the impression of legs. So it looks like they're straddling the creature. And another feature on the underside is this um, slot so that you can keep your little Luke Skywalker figures toasty and warm. Just like they did in the film. What else? Oh, a bit of, uh, the skiff there that belongs to that, I think. Let's pop that in there. I think that might be broken. Um, we've also got a very miserable looking Wampa snow creature. Um, he's also quite discoloured as well. You can see he's going all yellow. A lot of the Star Wars figures had this problem. When left in the sun, they'd uh, become discoloured. But his legs are lovely and white for some reason. I guess they're made from a different, a different type of material. Um, oh, what a mess I'm making! Ugh. I've got a bit of cleaning up to do later. And I saw there was something else in here. Yeah, this is not original vintage Star Wars stuff. This is more prequel stuff. I think that might even be. Attack of the Clones, so this has been dumped into the bag a lot later. Um, I do not remember who this is, or why she's got blobby blue gross slime coming out of her hand. I know, I know, it's supposed to be the Force. And this is, uh, that's her base, and I think that will be her lightsaber. It's the it's the woman Jedi's lightsaber. And is there anything else in that bag? No. But there is plenty more in the box. So here we've got... So in the 90s, in the mid-90s, Star Wars started to become popular again. And they started to create a new line of figures to coincide with the re-release of the films. The special edition films. I must have presumed that these were going to... Uh, increase in value over time and so I haven't opened these ones uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if I looked on eBay today that these were actually worth less today than their original price in the shop so to be honest I might as well open these and I might well do that in a future video take a proper look but this is uh, let's see it's Wicket the Ewok and his mummy and her name is Princess Leah. What else have we got? More. Oh yeah, we, we looked at the micro machines. We found some micro machines earlier. They're in that bag there. And here are some more from that line. These are little heads of aliens. And they come with little aliens 
that sit inside the heads of the aliens. Um, again, these are they're quite nicely modelled. They're interesting things if you like Star Wars. The trouble is, I don't really like Star Wars anymore, ex with the exception of these these old vintage bits and pieces, which have a certain charm. It all started to go a bit over the top when micro machines got involved and they started to redo lines and lines and lines lego got involved they released multiple films and you just can't keep up and you well i eventually lost interest um, talking about star wars vintage stuff here is the box of a snow speeder vehicle which if i give it a shake is completely empty um i, I don't know where the ship is it may be in that box, we'll see. Um, I don't know why it wouldn't be in there, but I do remember having it. So that goes very nicely with the Atat. Uh, let's put that box down there. Aha! These are the monster in my pockets. The original. These are the ones I remember. And it looks like I've got the whole series... I think I've got the whole series one and the whole series two. Limited edition series two, assortment A. Um, there's uh, the Loch Ness monster, which I've got two of. Uh, because it's a plesiosaur, let me see. Up here amongst my miniature plesiosaurs, I should have the a mini. There it is at the back here. There's the a different colour of the Loch Ness monster, uh, which I would have picked up on eBay. Just so I suppose that the. Um, the set here was was complete. Just said depending on what I ever wanted to do with it. These are another set of figures that I could probably justify doing another video on. And here I find that is limited edition series one assortment. A. So that's a series one. Uh, there should be another dinosaur amongst these if I remember. I thought there was a I thought there was a T Rex in this set. But I can't seem to see it. Oh, maybe it's on the other. Oh, I've got I've got Jurassic Park toys falling on my monster in my pockets. Uh, ah, there's your T Rex. Let's make it relevant to the channel. T Rex, one of the best monsters. Oh. And again, yeah, I can probably justify talking about these in a bit more detail. I vaguely recall I've got some cards that go with these toys uh, definitely stop falling over Dino Raider this is Jurassic Park what's his name? Skinner um, Avex on Fusil Tranquilisant et une blessure de dinosaur uh, I guess that means a tranquilizer to kill the baby baryonyx. Um, baby baryonyx! Well, I don't know. I, I, I think this is quite a rare figure. It's boxed up, and I've I, I probably left it boxed up because I thought it might be worth something. Maybe it is. But I'm tempted to open it anyway to, to get a look at this baryonyx, which is quite nice. A uh, little baby baryonyx walking on four legs. Very dumpy legs, they were ahead of their time in that regard. And here's your very angry Dino Raider. Can you remember him from Jurassic Park? He, uh, he, uh, you see him in the background in the T-Rex scene. And uh, what has he got here? Teeth around his neck, a lovely orange string vest, the skull of a primate on his belt buckle, and boots and a box to keep his baryonics in yeah so I don't know maybe maybe one of these days I'll open up this, this figure and uh, take a, a more detailed look at him is there anything underneath there no so the last thing in this box is more walkers crap this is walkers tazo collectors force back special edition the Star Wars trilogy R2D2 C3PO Princess Leia, Darth Vader with his lovely necklace. Now Tazos joined the celebration back on the big screen, 1996. So 
gives you an idea of when we were collecting these things. Uh, I think every everybody in the UK probably has a complete set of these. These are little uh, Tazos were these little plastic discs with slots around the edges so that you could put them together to build structures. And these were given away free as part of Walker's Crisps. Uh, I've got the whole set here. They slot into these cardboard pages. Mm. Tie fighters. Attats. Snow. Green man. Black man. White man. Hairy man. Old man. Bad man. Woman. I think at 35 minutes, that might be the end of part one, but we will continue later and take a look inside these boxes. And I believe the one on the left there, that has got the vast majority of the original vintage Star Wars action figures. It might take us a good while to get through those as well. So, see you later.